the Presbyterians and the whole thing, they all believe that there's a marriage of the church and the state. And where we have the separation of the church and the state, that's when Baptists, they did, they brought the religious liberty to England and they brought it to America and it was not easy. They were persecuted, they were burned, they were confiscated, their property was confiscated in America and it took, they fought in the American Revolution and after the American Revolution they still did not have freedom of religion in America. Failed it. And so after the, the amendment, the first and the second amendment, freedom of religion and freedom of speech, you wow. could not preach. Baptist preacher could not preach in any city in any state in America. They founded one colony here, and that was Rhode Island, and you didn't, and that was the only state, or the only colony, Rhode Island was the only colony that, that you had religious freedom in, and John Clark and Roger Williams uh, worked on that one, Dr. John Clark especially. And they founded two churches, one in 1639, 1839 in Providence and uh, Newport, Rhode Island. That's a little history. Peter Puffer. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Well, they live different ways than other people. They live in colonies because they couldn't be in society because they were persecuted. And they were really good craftsmen or whatever they did. And their pastors were doctors. And they were they 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 were literary, you know, they they were literate. They, and you know the Catholics were not literate. because the, the, the Baptists could read and write that they were witches. And so, even in Salem, some of those 
people that they did, even here in the Pilgrims, when they had those Duncan cheers, they were dunking these Baptists because they were tipping, you know, for baptism, and they would dunk them until they were dead. Well, around here, uh, and uh, I've read a lot of history on the Amish, uh, they, they pretty well heard on a commune. Uh, they own, you know, each one owns your property. Uh, and, uh, and then what the one you're thinking of, that uh, old as a chameleon, that's that there's a lot of them now that bought big places in Montana. Uh, and that's the uh, Hutterites. Oh, yeah, the Hutterites. They were ancient Baptists also. But see, you see these people, and they carried along a lot of the customs that they, they had. But they all believed in freedom of religion. They stayed with them themselves because they couldn't go out in society. They were always uh, fantastic craftsmen of some sort. They always had a doctor and a pastor that was very educated, and they took care of their doctor, their pastor was their doctor, and everything, and, and uh, anyway, it was, uh, that goes way back yonder, you know, and they come in here, they're a little different and everything, they're, they kind of went eccentric, but uh, they were so used to being separatists, you know, even... Abraham Lincoln is a scoundrel that he was, which most people don't realize, but he was bad. But his great, 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 great grandfather, Obadiah Ong, he was a he was a Baptist preacher and a great theologian here in America, and they uh, he was taken and arrested and beaten. His property was confiscated for preaching the gospel. And they beat him so bad that one of the, I think it was a, I can't remember what university, there was a, a doctor that was a president of the university saw him being beat, and he became a convert. He had been a Church of England or something before. And um, anyway, he became a Baptist convert after that, of course. Then they got rid of him because they weren't going to have a, have a Baptist, they had a seminary, you know. And a college, even though they were educated. M7IU. Hey, <laughs> well, I guess I want to get in there and go to bed. So, what did time you got? Quarter to eight? Yeah. Quarter to nine here. I'm wore out for what I did today, and my heart has been giving me trouble all day long and breathing. I I just go out and do a little bit, and I'm huffing and puffing. My lungs are not what they were before that propane thing. I lost 20% of the capacity. Well, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if not more. Yeah, well, they said 20. But, uh, they said, I'm the only survivor. The Lord brought me through it. I guess Marilyn needed me in, in what I teach and stuff. And probably told somebody, I guess, to the Lord. Yeah, or just for a reason and a season, I guess. Yeah, well, you know, I've been invisible all my life, and I've been through some pretty wild, dangerous things in my life. But I think I'm getting towards the end of it. I may be about to run my course here pretty soon. Well, I feel keep on going. Yeah, well, uh, right from death is uh, in, uh, on your tongue. Well, it is. I hope I've done some good in this world. For the Lord, that is. That big website is really big. There's enough on there to, to beat the world. Damn it. <laughs> My frickin' tuner. I was just gonna jump in there and say hello. Man.
Afghanistan. Yeah, Afghanistan that left them all that high-tech stuff. Yeah, but this was all a planned catastrophe. And you know, I don't want you listening to me speak about the end time. But um, there are Muslims that have become Christian converts. Well, I was listening to uh, one guy the other day uh, on the TV on the CBN Christian Broadcasting Network, and he said uh, one of the hot places right now for uh, uh, people to turn into the Lord is, uh, is Iraq. Well, I take that with a grain of salt because over there in any of those countries, I'm going to tell you something to you. You convert over there in those countries. You got to leave. Or you're going to be dead. Yeah, those are underground. Uh, and, uh, Iran is another one. And he said that China's got a great big underground church. Oh, yeah, they wanted me to go to China. I don't know what I told you that or not. Then streets underground. But Dakota was well. I couldn't leave her, you know. So I put the website up. That's when the website went out. And the first month that I had the website up, I had 15 1,900 and something hours of downloads from China alone. Hey, thanks for going over there. They said, you see, you're the only one who can stand up and just keep on teaching for, for 24 hours and never stop. Yeah, so the Lord has uh, over with converting people, yeah. Oh, there's going to be a lot of people converted even in the tribulation period. Yeah, they're going to go through hell, as they say, but uh, they'll be converted. Yeah. Well, Israel will be born again in, in a day. Well, Israel was kind of born in 1948. Well, they'll be born again about the middle of the tribulation period. Now, yeah, that, that's when they became a nation again, May the 14th, 1948. That's when God began to regather them. He scattered them there in the AD 70s. They were scattered all over the world. But there were still some of them in Babylon, you know. That's when they started all the Babylonian Talmud and all that, the Mishnah, and, and all of that started over there, the traditions of the fathers which Jesus spoke again in the seventh chapter, I believe, and, and Mark and several other places. But they, they didn't study the Bible anymore. They studied the writers, the commentaries of the Bible. Uh, and they, they castigated Jesus all, over and over and over for not, for not practicing the tradition. Well, God didn't give them the tradition. The Talmud did that. And then there was the Jerusalem Talmud, there's a Babylonian Talmud, which I'm looking at over here. And the Mishnah and the Kabbalah, all that stuff. I did a lot of studying on that. Of course, I got all of the stuff over there, all the writings of them, the Quran, and the uh, life of the Apostle of God, uh, Ibn Ishik, the life of Muhammad, the oldest history of his life. Well, I believe that uh, the Desert of Jerome, uh, uh, somewhere in it, uh, don't they have a bunch of uh, gold and stuff that they got uh, from the Roman Empire when they took over? Well, see, from Jeremiah say onward, they never really had the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is hit, hit at their own Mount Pisgah someplace. Jeremiah took that Ark of the Covenant and hit it on that mountain. They made other Arks of the Covenant later. There's the Temple of Herod, but he never had, they never had the real one. And then the temple there, they had ten candlesticks and, and different things. It was not like the original. The, the, the tabernacle and all of that and the ashes of the red heifer are all hid in a cave on Mount Pisgah, and that's in Jordan today. And that's in Second Maccabees, the second chapter. It tells you about that. And the remnants of uh, the tribulation uh, uh, is a... Well, they're going, yeah, they're going to the down the center there to, the, uh, for God to protect them. But sometime during that period of time there, in the end time, they're going to go find God's going to lead them back to the, the Ark of the Covenant. 
and the tabernacle and the, the ashes of red heifer. That, that's all. That's all hid over there in that mountain, in, that, in a cave someplace. The one. And Moses is buried over there too, you know. And and the devil fought God over the body of Moses. Yeah, I read that uh, a little deal about that. Yeah, and uh, well, and really that was uh, because. Uh, God, he knew that the devil would uh, try to make a kind of a temple out of Moses and forget about God. Yeah. Well, that's what happens to Catholicism, you know. You see all these traditions, everything. Catholicism, basically, they, you know, the Old Testament was fulfilled. And then we have the Hekai and the DSAK, the New Testament. And that's what we're supposed to go by today. The Jews, they did not want to lay it down, so God destroyed the tabernacle through Rome. They weren't not in the temple. They were not ever going to offer another sacrifice. He got rid of that. He got the one and got rid of the one. And, uh, and so Matthew 18, verse 26. All of that was torn down. The sacrifice has been done. And now, you know, they want to build another one. They all want to offer sacrifices again, which is blasphemy. But, uh, well, yeah, uh, uh, the Antichrist is going to allow them to do that. Uh, you know, the, uh, you know what the Quran, you know what the Quran teaches? Well, I've uh, heard about parts of it and everything, never read it. I read it a bunch of times. But the... Did you ever, ever listen to any of my messages along the, the, the book of Revelation and the Quran compared with each other? Well, I read it on Revelation, yeah. Okay, that one, I did about a bunch of them in the Kingdom Studies. Okay. Anyway, the, the Quran says the beast is, is, uh, is a, a creation of all of them. And, uh, and I can describe it, but it's really a weird-looking animal beast or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, he's going to mark all the true Muslims and they were confessing the faith of the that there is no God but Allah. And Mohammed is his messenger and he has no companion. But no Jesus, you know, no Islam. But anyway, uh, everything in the Quran that the Bible says is bad, the Quran says it's good. The Antichrist or the Mahdi is, is great. He, he's going to be a reincarnation of Muhammad. They're going to have a false Jesus, Issa, which is going to come out of Arabia. Uh, the, the, their body is going to come out of Syria there someplace. And the beast is uh, it's going to mark all the true believers with a mark. The Bible says that the mark of the beast is evil. It's a it's the name of the beast. And uh, taking the mark of the beast will damn you. This one they wanted. And uh, anyway, there, everything is just totally different poles. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, uh, the devil is a copycat, you know, but you know, he is turned. Well, Islam is going to make a Utna. A contract for seven years with the Jews, but in the middle of the seven years, they're gonna, he's gonna build, they're gonna build a temple, and everybody's gonna be able to go into the temple. But in the middle of that seven years, the body is gonna stand there and say that they have to worship him, and uh, and then the Jews are gonna take off and go to Petra, as you know, when that happens. But you see how this yeah. stuff goes? It's not coming out of Rome. No, uh, no. But, uh, but, uh, Three of those Bibles left. There were 50 copies of them made. They were all made in Greek. 
They were all in Newfield. And uh, they, the whole Bible from, from Genesis through Revelation. And three of them are extinct. The Codex Vaticana, Alexandris, and Fanatica. Their sister manuscripts, all of them. And the Fanaticus was found in Mount Sinai. There at St. Catherine's. He was there. And uh, Tischendorf went up there and saw it and ended up getting the thing and they took it. And uh, I think it is in, I believe it is in England now. Uh, Russia had the Alexandria, Kodak Alexandria. Kodak Vatican, this was in the Vatican. And I think England got the one manuscript now. And I, you know, when I started reading Greek, I learned it from the copies from those Bibles, the old Hillfield. I didn't, uh, I learned to read it like that, and that way I could read, read the ancient Greek, you know. When I went over there to all over the Middle East, I could read all that stuff. Yeah, well, and all those uh, mystic books out of the Bible, I'm sure, because uh, they, they don't have that group uh, in Rome that uh, was translated uh, from the Greek uh, to the English, and, you know, and there's several guys that said that, you know, they have some, some uh, hidden books of the Bible, they call it, uh, out of it. Well, the hidden books of the Bible really were later, much later than when the Bible was written. The Bible had to be written from 100 A.D. back. Uh, all this stuff was much later. The, um, the, the King James Bible was never see. You have to realize King James and, and the Church of England and Catholicism was basically the same belief. They just split up over Henry VIII. Now, the Apocrypha was it supposed to be in the past. If you printed the King James Bible without the Apocrypha at one time, it was a death penalty. It was a death penalty. Because the Apocrypha was supposed to be in there. And I've read the Apocrypha too. And there's history in there that, you know, first Maccabees, second Maccabees is history. And you, you can, I read all of that stuff, you know. Uh, and then the Gospel of Barnabas and all of that, but it's not, it doesn't go back far enough. It's not really, I think the Bible we have, they left out uh, a couple of books that we have now. We found them. Uh, they're not in the Bible, but you can, uh, you can read, read them. There's nothing contrary to the Bible in them. There's that uh, layout being letter. And I took the layout being letter and translated it from Greek and English and it's not a class on it. It's not a big deal, but Paul wrote it also. And he referred to it, I think, in two different places.
Catholic Bible on that road. Oh, there's, there's a lot of stuff that ain't in that one uh, that's in ours. It's the, the Douay version. You have all the, the apocryphal books in that. The old, old, old King James Bibles all had the apocrypha in them. But they, let, they, they always looked at the apocrypha as a little less inspired than the, than the Bible. Uh, and, uh, the, like I said, first and second Maccabees is real good history. That, that's solid history. And it tells you where the Ark of the Covenant is, too. Many people don't, they got the Ark of the Covenant here and there, but they didn't read the, they didn't read the first and second Maccabees. And that tells you where it is. And it was never in Herod's Temple. Well, uh, there's a, uh, a rabbi, he, he says it's buried in, underneath the, the old Jerusalem. Yeah, I heard that too, but I believe, I believe Jeremiah.